the whole drive, I'm just crying. I'm sobbing the whole way. And it's almost an hour drive. No music type of drive. Mm, only and so thoughts. when I come home, I just want to vent to my boyfriend, you know? So I come home and I open, I go to my bedroom because he's in there. And the first thing I see is him just laying in the bed, face down, ass so high. So, you know, he's noticeable. In, mm-hmm. in one of my pink lace songs, and uh, I I really don't know, man. We don't, we both just sort of look at each other, and I'm still sobbing because the day was just so shit. Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Georgia, uh, what's going on with you? Uh, not a whole lot. What's your? Are you in a? You're in a car right now. I just heard a turn signal. Uh, yes, I am actually. Where are we going? Are we turning right or uh, left? Nope. That's what I want to know. Oh, I am actually turning left. I'm going home. Going home. Okay. What's uh? What's home? Uh, home is Oklahoma. Where are we coming from? We're coming from my boyfriend's work and McDonald's. He doesn't work at McDonald's. He works actually at a pizza place. But I also wanted to get McDonald's. So, you know. Mm, what'd you get at McDonald's? I got a cheeseburger happy meal. A cheeseburger yeah, no happy meal. I also I don't get mine yeah. with any onions or any pickles. I do get the pickles sometimes. It's it's a it's a, it really depends on my mood that day. Did you get a toy? What's the toy promo they got going on? Is it Batman? You know, I haven't checked yet because I was too excited to like rush home because I was nervous if you were gonna answer before I got home or if I was still driving. But that ended up happening anyway. <laughs> By the way, your turn signal has been on the entire time we've been talking. And I'm, are you, did you make I the know, turn? No, I'm just now turning. I'm finally turning. Don't worry. It's about to turn off. I promise. Oh, so okay. Sorry. I, you know, for a second, for a second, I thought you were just like taking a really long right turn. Oh, wait, you said you were turning left. I thought you were taking a really long left turn. And then I, and then it came to me. I was like, oh, I'm dumb. She's in the left lane waiting to turn yeah sorry about but that. by the way but if you're uh, if you're in the left lane do you really and do you really need a turn signal because everyone behind you is also turning left so they and th- like b- just be being in the lane that itself signifies that you are turning left so do you need to add a turn signal on top of it i have actually had arguments with people well i wouldn't say arguments just uh the- heavy discussions over this in my opinion i think that the turn signal is there for a reason you should just use it just use it just in case you never know i mean granted the point is true but like i don't know i've seen people do some fuck shit on the road and you can't trust their turn signals or not and they do some weird stuff so it's just like hey just just follow the general guidelines and we're all cool georgia it says here you one day came home from work crying and then you, when you got home, you found your boyfriend face down, ass up, wearing one of your pink thongs, and then that and that yeah, made I, you feel worse. What? Tell me that story. So I used to work uh, at a. I mean, it doesn't really matter where I used to work, but I was having a terrible, terrible day at work. I used to cut men's hair, and. She said the place they wanted us, they wanted us to like cut so many people, and the men there were so rude. It was a barbershop type place, and it was just terrible. So I'm coming home, the whole drive, I'm just crying. I'm sobbing the whole way. And it's almost an hour drive. No music type of drive. That's it was terrible. Mm, only and so thoughts. when I come home, I just want to vent to my boyfriend, you know, because mm. heavy as shit, hey, that's what you do. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, so I come home and I open, I go to my bedroom because he's in there. And the first thing I see is him just laying in the bed, face down, ass so high. So, you know, he's noticeable. In, mm-hmm. in one of my pink lace songs. And uh, I I really don't know, man. We, don't, we both just sort of look at each other and I'm still sobbing because the day was just so shit. And he's sort of just laying there awkwardly. And for it, I swear to God, it, it felt like it was an hour. 
it was probably just 30 seconds but eventually he you know sits up and he's like um i wanted to like make you laugh i guess when you came home and i just kept crying and it was just really really fucking awkward he then was like consoling me in his in the song still his balls were hanging out and everything and i was just crying he was comforting me it was a it was a whole thing Hmm. Oh, you know, that's actually nice. Uh, so uh, w- when I first read this, I thought it was I, 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 I didn't realize that he intentionally wanted to be walked in on in this position. I, I thought he was doing something discreet and you encountered upon him in the act. Nope. He uh, he likes to be seen doing these things for for shits and giggles, I guess. He's, I don't even know where he got the idea from. He, I don't know. I, gen, I honestly just don't know. And did you eventually find yourself amused by this once you calmed down or, or, I mean, you, you, you said, you said it made it, it made it worse. Yeah. Cause you know, I was already having a bad day and I just wanted to talk to him about it. And just something about knowing that like his, I mean, he's a man, you know, and sometimes men are like nasty and sweaty and shit. And like he was in my thong and I don't know, something about his balls just being up in my thong. It it was just a weird, I was already having a bad day, so I see bad situations. But Mm -hmm. yeah, it it, honestly, after I calmed down, though, we both laughed so fucking hard about it. We were talking about it last night, actually. I told him that uh, I was probably going to potentially talk to you and tell you about this. And he was like, that's great. He says it's the most embarrassing thing he ever had to deal with. I like that your boyfriend intentionally puts himself in embarrassing situations. I think that there is a strong power in that. No, honestly, it's it's one of the... He makes my life really amazing with that. I'm never bored with him, ever. Hmm. Hmm. Man, I, I, that's so great to hear because I think a lot of people think... Like, oh, if I'm doing this way or whatever, women won't like that. But here you are. This guy is in your thong, ass up, and you, you're, you're, you enjoy that as a part of uh, uh, his whimsy. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Truthfully, while in the moment, yeah, it was kind of shitty. It's 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 fucking hilarious to look back up for sure. Um, how long have you guys been dating for? About three years now. Three years. Wow. Is he with you right now? Oh, no, you're in the car. he's. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm wondering what he. He's probably like setting something up right now. Like he's wearing one of your bras, or he's put one of your tampons in, and you'll walk in through the door, and he'll be spread eagle. That would be amazing. You know, I, I hope so. And I'll update you. I'll for sure update you on that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let us know. Thank you very much for calling, Georgia. Absolutely. Thank you. Jacob? Yeah, this is, this is Jacob. Uh, Jacob, it says here that you're having anxiety about whether or not you are an asshole. Yeah. Actually, Interesting. I started thinking about it a few weeks ago. I had a few drinks with some friends at a concert. And uh, I made some, I guess, asshole jokes out loud. And uh, it seemed like a few people heard. And I said out loud, am I a dick? And my friends started laughing. And I, I believe they think that I'm a dick. All right, so you make a joke. Uh, then you second guess the joke, wonder if you're an asshole, and then your friends laugh along, and that makes you think that you're an asshole. Um, that that's not. I mean, that's when I started thinking about it. But now I. Um, okay, so this like is a. I'm sorry. Can you continue? I just feel like I'm microanalyzing my actions day to day. And mm-hmm. 
I guess it doesn't take much microanalyzing, but I feel like I am a dick. Why do you feel like you're a dick? Well, I'm a delivery guy for a delivery company in the not so nice part of town here. And yep. um, I don't have very good customer service skills I've come to find, or at least not now. Um, but my road rage has gone up. If someone gives me attitude, I just don't, I don't care. I just go off or I'll give them the finger. And all right. So, so you feel like you, as you have gotten older, have become more prone to anger. Maybe anger. Yeah. Bitterness, frustration. Okay. I'd like, all right. I deal with so, parking dog like all day long. Yeah. So you're getting agitated. So you have a lot like of stimulus and variables coming in. And you feel like all this stimulus and variables um, are like going through you and then coming out of you in the form of assholish behavior as defined by you. Yeah, that's not a bad way to put it, Gek. Okay. So, um... Do you... Let me ask you something. Do you care about whether or not you're an asshole? Do you desire not to be an asshole? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So this went hand-in-hand with some other thoughts that I've been having and just about why we're here and why this is all happening. well well okay well uh, and, let's 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 focus i want to focus on one thing because if we get on other yeah, thoughts yeah, yeah, then we'll, 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 yeah, 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 we'll for sure. go crazy we'll never you know so okay, all right but why but let me ask you have... let me ask you okay what what makes someone do you, do you desire to be actively good or you just desire not to be actively bad No, I want to. I want to be. I want to be actively not bad. If we have to all be in this world together, and yeah, I that's not what I'm asking. People. Though, like, do you want? Do you want to be actively good, or do you just like want to cease this behavior that you say is is being an asshole? No, I want to be good. Okay, let's. I want to. I want to with you right now. I want to define. What does it mean to be an asshole? Like, do we even know, or are we just like, or are we just saying that? Like, we don't okay. even know what we don't even know what that means. Being an asshole. We're just, this is, this okay, is, this so. is just words. What does that What does that actually mean okay. to be an asshole? <clears throat> sure. So, I guess an asshole is someone who could affect the way a person is feeling and not care. Okay. An asshole, in your definition, is somebody who negatively affects the way another person is feeling and doesn't care. Well. Yeah. Uh, when is the last time you feel as though you negatively affected another person? Well, Day, but perhaps they negatively affected me first. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, when is the last time you feel like you negatively affected another person? Today. Today. What happened today? Um, I yelled at a lady at work. Okay. You yelled at a lady at work. Yeah. Uh, do you feel bad about that? Not so much, but there's okay. a reason. Okay. Um, all right. So you yelled at a lady at work, and you don't feel bad about it, and um, you feel like you negatively affected that lady. Hmm. What was, what's the reason? Her dog bit my hand. 
her dog bit your hand. So you yell at her. Yeah. I tried to hand her the package and her dog jumped up and bit my hand. Hmm. Okay. What would you if, like to if, have done in that situation? If, if I had set the scene, this, this place is what, crazy. Uh, uh, Jacob, 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 Jacob. What would you like to have Here done in that part. situation? Um, I guess gotten in my car or my truck and left. But um, it's just hard to compose myself in those situations. Why is it hard to compose yourself in these situations? Because getting bit by someone's dog hurts, and they could have stopped the dog. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm going to tell you, this is some like, uh, I've been reading a little bit about this. Look, look at me, I've been reading. Um, you know, uh, you know, you know, stoic philosophy? You ever heard about that Not shit? Familiar. Not familiar. Um, basically like trying to have I'm not I'm not coming at this as a master of it I'm just coming at this again as a thought exploration alongside you you know sure. accepting things that we can't control right this dog mm -hmm. bit you this dog bit you you cannot control other people you can't control mm -hmm. if somebody <clears throat> cuts you off in traffic you said you have road rage can't control if a lady's sure. dog bites you, but you can control how you act. And you desire, it seems, it seems like you desire this, because if you didn't desire this, you wouldn't be calling me, we wouldn't be talking about this. So, you do. You bought, your actions are showing me. You desire to be cooler and calmer in these situations. Okay. So... You can't control if the lady's dog bites you. You can't control if the guy's car hits you or cuts you off or whatever. But you can control how you act towards it. So, if a lady's dog bites you, you have an opportunity. You, you, you look at it not as a bad thing. You look at it as an opportunity. You're, you're going to retrain your brain here to go, Oh, a bad thing happened to me that was under no circumstances my control. Here is now an opportunity for me to work toward this thing I want by choosing not to care. By choosing not to yell at the lady. Choosing not to get upset. Because it's the most logical choice. Right? Because the dog bit you. That, that, that already happened. So, right. why would you not take that as an opportunity? It's, like, logical. This isn't, like, this isn't feel-good, wholesome bullshit. This is, like, yeah. Yeah. legit, logically, it is of your best interest to see it as an opportunity to work toward what you want, which is a greater control over your emotions. So okay. take this bad thing that happened, decide to use it as an opportunity to not get upset, and, dude, fucking, you don't have to become a monk overnight, but, like, next time, <laughs> like, like some homework here, like, next time that happens... Regain, like, be conscious, you know, because, because, because you're you're gonna you're gonna slip into your unconscious habit of getting pissed. Next time this happens, choose not to be upset about it. Choose to just get back into your car and see how that feels. Because mm -hmm. once you've been able to consciously choose how you feel about a situation, once you then learn. Oh shit, this is within my power. This is of my control. And maybe that'll make you feel empowered to keep acting in that direction. What do you think about all of that? I like that. It's good advice. Okay. It's, it's easy to um, get caught up in the moment 
especially because I'm listening to you in my right ear all day long while I'm driving. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it just seems to happen so fast. People are fucking crazy. They're down to steal packages. They're down to get my fucking truck. Like... They need to know that I'm not putting up with that shit. Why? Like, why do they need? Why does anyone need to know anything, James? Because I James, go could there you imagine, every- James? It's just that, James. This is like you're tell you're all, we're on the phone. You're telling me, like the thesis of the reason why you call. I don't know. Maybe you called in just to tell me these stories, like just for fun, which is fine. I guess that's the whole point of this. But like, it sounded to me like you you have a d- desire to like change your behavior. I don't know if you actually do. It's fine. By the way, by the way, it's fuck it's fucking fine if you don't. Like you don't have to. So you can you can continue you know doing whatever it is you're doing. I no, no one gives a shit, but I you know if you do. I don't know if you do. You might not, but like do do you? Do you do you want to be a little bit calmer? Oh yeah, for sure. I, okay. I feel then like I next time, next time, like next time, form. next time, something like that happens, just like <laughs> make the decision to take the path of least resistance and be calm about it. Yeah. Just make that conscious decision, <laughs> and if you do that know, enough, it'll it become a habit. So much if I could smoke weed at, at work. James, good luck to you, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Love you, Gay. Hi, Will. Damn, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to actually connect with you. Well, here we are. We've connected, whatever that means. How are you doing, Will? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good, Well, Oh, uh, yeah. That fucking, uh, what's up? What's happening? What's cracking? Uh, not much. I, can, I, can I read what it says here? It says here that uh, you were homeless, sleeping in a dumpster two years ago. But you have behind brought your life. Oh, it's oh, it behind a dumpster. <laughs> that's a little yeah. bit. Ni- I mean, that's I mean, it. that's uh, that's a little bit nicer than in the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, um, uh, I was probably I don't know, like eighteen at that point, and I'm like twenty one now, for reference. Um. Didn't necessarily have, like, a super troubled childhood or anything, but, uh, you know, got into drugs when I was, like, 14 or 15, you know, started playing the drums in a punk band and got my nose pierced and all that jazz, and I was like, hell yeah, let's, you know, do a bunch of coke and speed and stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah, obviously, it got me into some trouble, so I uh, got kicked out of my parents' house and got kicked out of school. Wound up in the city nearby, Calgary. And, uh, yeah. It wasn't like I was sleeping behind a dumpster regularly, but I was couch hopping, and whenever I couldn't find a place, I'd hop on down to 7th Avenue. And you get said a you hop on down to 7th Avenue. So <laughs> you, had a, you, you had a dumpster in particular that was your Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it was the spot. How did you... Find that spot and declare it as your spot. Did you like sort of go looking around, or did you happen upon it? What What's the story of how you found your spot? Honestly, it was just like I I used to just trek around with uh, a couple pairs of clothes and uh, and a blanket in my backpack, and uh, this spot was not too far from one of the train stations downtown so i was buying a and w burger chain um so you know i used to hang around at that burger chain with some of the other hobos and uh yeah no i just you know it's just right behind the a and w pretty pretty secure there is mm-hmm. like some kind of generator or heater or some shit nearby so it was actually pretty warm in the winter mm-hmm. and so uh, didn't smell you're... too bad for being a burger chain Oh, yeah, uh, the A&W? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, yeah. Smells like good beef, a, at least. Yeah, yeah, no, A&W is a good one. I, so I wanted to ask, you said you were hanging out with uh, other hobos, you said. 
Did you make friends during this time period with other people that were staying around the A and W? I mean, like not good ones, um, but I feel like anybody in that that situation recognizes that to a certain degree you got to stick together. You know, um, there were a lot of people that I didn't necessarily agree with that I found myself around because the numbers kind of provided security or also like knowing some of these scumbags and knowing that some of the other scumbags who would potentially give me trouble knew them you know that's a sense of security in, in, in and of itself i didn't really ask too many questions when you we were with when you were with other people so that was the main thing honestly like i can't think of too many people i was hanging out with downtown that i would want to hang out with now but um yeah, no, definitely. I made some friends. It was just kind of making do with what I had at the time, though, too, you know. So what are the main thoughts going through your mind as you are, what, would you have a sleeping bag or anything? No, no, I had a I had a blanket that I stole from my friend's house. So when you're falling <laughs> asleep behind the dumpster, you got your blanket you stole from your friend. What, as, as you lay down at night, and go to sleep. What are the thoughts going through your head? Uh, nine times out of ten, it was, holy fuck, I'm hungry. Um, a lot of the time, it wasn't a lot of sleeping being done. It was just sitting there listening to, you know, trains go by, cars go by, sirens, uh, listening to all the bullshit that a, a big city has to bring. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, just kind of thinking about what I could do next to, to make sure the next night I wouldn't be in the same position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty much and it. Eventually, and eventually, as you say, uh, you got out of that position, you say. What was the process for you of uh, getting yourself out of there and into a more stable place? Oh, I mean... It, it was a lot of help for sure. You know, like there's, there's a community center in my city um, and uh, they helped a lot for sure. Um, a lot of volunteers there that literally would just hang around. Like they'd cook food for vagrants like me and just hang around and listen to whatever we had to say or whatever. And yeah, yeah, they, uh, the Alex, anybody from there is listening, shout out, what's up? But uh, yeah, no. So, a lot of help, you know, I had a couple of good friends from, from school and whatnot that had my back and, you know, my brother and my mom and my dad, obviously. Um, but at the same time, same, same thing that I was telling the, uh, the screener, um, it's not like, like, you know, I had a conversation with my brother a couple of years after the matter and the big thing that I took away from it, he, he, he told me, you know, you can't jump away, uh, jump in front of a runaway train, you know, like. He was there to support me. He, you know, he made it very clear he loved me. But whatever decisions I was going to make were mine to make. And, you know, he, yeah, but that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Like, um, I had to yeah. change my perspective. It was up to nobody else. You know, like it was, it was my own thing. So you can't a jump bit in of front of a took runaway a, train. I like that uh, that phrase. Yeah, yeah, man. I like that one, too. And it's true, you know? Like, you can't... Uh, whatever reckless decision somebody's going to make, they're going to make for themselves. And you can't stop that. All you can do is provide your own perspective. And that's exactly what my brother did. And the rest mm-hmm. of my family and, you know, my good friends. But uh, I'm glad none of them took that upon themselves to change the way that I was thinking or what I was doing or anything. Because, you know, that's, that's some juju nobody needs. Um, so what is your life like now well um, about uh, like eight months ago nine months ago or whatever uh, I moved from the prairies of Canada just a little ways east of uh, east of Calgary um, out to the mountains uh, into a ski town to uh, chase a chase a dream I had since I was like 15 or whatever Uh, I moved out to Whistler to work at a mountain bike park and uh i decided to stay for winter i'm working at a at a ski rental shop now 
pretty sick. Can't lie. You know, I get to go skiing on my lunch break. Sick. Uh, I'm looking out out my out my, uh, out my back door right now at beautiful Mount Sproat. It's nice. Um, money's not great, uh, but yeah, honestly, I don't think I I'd change anything for the world. Honestly, even my past oh. experiences, all that homelessness and druggy bullshit and whatnot, I think a lot of that gave me the perspective I have now. Uh, mm. and that perspective gives me the ability to really enjoy where I am now. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, man, that's cool. I like uh, I like whenever you know I hear people like you know have gone through something uh, something tough, but they like get something out of it that they can use in their sort of current life. Um, Ah, oh, that's awesome. A ski rental. But do you go skiing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Every day that I can. Beautiful. Uh, Will, yeah. is there anything else that you want to say to the to the people? Thank you for sharing this story. I I, uh, I, I, I always enjoy hearing a nice comeback tale. Well, yeah, honestly, one big thing I want to say is, first of all, my God, you guys have such a pleasant show on your hands. Even the screener was just like such a such a nice dude. Yeah, just overall vibe, pleasant. Um, and then beyond that, fuck, don't give up on yourselves, people, you know, do what you can to make it work. And eventually it will. Beautiful. Thank you for calling, Will. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate what you're doing here. Hmm. This is the wrong thing to have gotten out of that, but I'm I'm kind of craving A and W now. Rick Fallon. Oh, hello. Hey, Rick Fallon. What's uh? What what do we got going on in the background? Are you watching a soap opera of some kind? Yeah, it's Days of Our Lives. Oh, is it actually? No. Did I, did it, I, oh. It's it's The Simpsons. I, I thank you for yes ending me by the way. It's um it's nice. I I always I always uh, appreciate that. I always appreciate it's really hard Rick Fallon, it's so hard to have a conversation where you feel like you're being listened to and the other person is taking feedback from what you said and using it to inform what they then say and then you back take what they said that was informed by what you said and then using that to inform what you say. And I mean, that's ideally how a conversation goes. Would you not agree? Wow. Um, yeah. Isn't, and that's the whole point of this show, I think, right? No, the point of this show is being a gecko and talking to people on the phone. Oh. You are a gecko. I paused The Simpsons. Thank you. It wasn't that. that great of an episode. Yeah. What's going on, Rick Fallon? Is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about? It's fine if not. If you seem like a guy we could just kind of, you know, hang out <laughs> together on the phone. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm down for anything. I mean, I told the call screener guy, I uh, I don't know. I guess I've just been feeling a little weird lately. Um, I turned thirty over the summer. And it's pretty strange because it's like, you know, I think maybe I'll live till I'm like 90. And then after that, uh, I don't know how much, you know, you can really consider that living. So that's like a third of my life. It's pretty strange. Yeah. I, uh, well, why are you so sure that you're going to live to 90? I feel like I feel like most people are getting to 80 these days. Really? Oh, uh, I yeah. don't know. My great grandma lived till she was nine, uh, 100. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So you have good genes. You'll uh, all right. You know, we could we could say we could say ninety. But then you're right. You did make a good point. Eighty to ninety, or even if you live to a hundred, ninety to a hundred. It's like, what are you really even doing at that point? It's. I feel like it's generally like thirty years is like about a third of your life, maybe. You know. I, yeah, you know, you're it's a third just, or less. It's just strange to think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know that. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, and you know, and I so that kind of you know I, I was dissatisfied with my job, so I quit that. Uh, oh, nice! And uh, then I decided to go camping. So you you're sort of coming to terms with the fact that a third or more of your life is is over, and uh, yeah. 
if we're looking back, let's look back at that thirty years. Now we don't we don't have to go into every every single Sunday of it, but what at a glance, what are we uh, what are we looking at here? Um, hmm. My life's been kind of weird and uh, kind of sad, but uh, I've done a lot of fun stuff and crazy stuff. So um, I feel like I've always had friends and stuff, but I never went to uh, college and got a degree. I wanted to be a musician, uh, and I was in some cool bands, but I uh, never really... I guess put enough effort into it and then I became a carpenter and I did a lot of really nice woodwork like working for very wealthy people uh, and uh, that was cool but then I tried to go to school and as soon as I went to school uh, COVID happened and uh, kind of shut down the campus so it's been a pretty wild Pretty, pretty strange. Uh, like I've been, like I've been, you know, it's, it's. I've been trying a lot of different things, I guess. Mm. So you, you said kind of. Uh, did you say fun? Kind of fun, kind of sad. That was the two immediate words you used yeah. to describe your life thus far. Which, by the way, uh, you know, that's pretty. That's pretty good. If we're talking about trying to live a colorful life. You know, yeah, no uncommon. reveling in the reveling in the highs and the lows. Sure, yeah. I like what's both. been? Uh, I mean, uh, what, what, what's been the mo- the most? I guess fun time period of these thirty years, and what were you doing in that in that particularly fun time period? Oh, uh, probably. Uh... From, like, the ages of, like, maybe 20 to 24, like, you know, early 20s, I'd guess. Early 20s were pretty cool. I just played a lot of shows in my band, drank a lot, smoked a lot of weed, did a lot of psychedelics, and uh, didn't really care what was uh, what was going to happen. Hmm. So that was cool. Okay. And so then, uh, all right, let's do 24 to... 30 what's going on 24 to 30 the sort of mid late 20s um i don't know i just uh i i kind of just worked and didn't really didn't really think much of it i became like a carpenter because i thought like i'd be like flipping houses or something like i thought it'd be cool like i wouldn't have to have a real job like i just like go in and like flip houses and uh i wouldn't have a boss and i'd make like a lot of money or something but uh is that, i guess you need a lot of money to start doing that right did i mean did it work out kind of like that or did it work out not like that even slightly no, on a scale from like work to slightly. work what, what how would you how would you where would you put it uh works worse to work uh, on, a, on a scale of it works like that too. It didn't work like that at all. How how much did it? Work oh like well, that? no, it didn't work like that at all. Then I tried to okay. go to school to be an engineer, yeah. but um, then COVID happened, and then it was kind of weird. I was forced to go back doing this sort of carpentry stuff, and then I've been like freelancing and just sort of living at my mom's house and writing some music and uh, yeah, not not really mm-hmm. sure. It's it's very strange. Like nothing. I've been down twenty different paths, but nothing. It's all just been one intertwined experience, yeah. and I'm like I'm kind of okay with it. So you had this realization lately. Uh, you just turned thirty. You're you're like, all right, this is a solid third over. Um, we we we've we've t- looked back at the third. We've had some pretty damn good times. We've had some sad times, but we we kind of feel like we're accepting it all as part of the uh, human experience. Now, what's? Oh yeah. Let's let's get a. All right, now we're in the present. What's uh? What's going on? What's going on in the present? What's going on today? This week. Yeah, I'm just um thinking about. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really like think about much. I just kind of, uh, 
I just kind of go to the gym and um, I'm just, I'm, I kind of stopped caring what's going to happen. And I just kind of like exist with what's going on around me. I just kind of um, stopped trying to be something. Uh, I got really into this guy. His name is Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, like that's who I thought you were going to say. Yeah, the power of now. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've been kind of like that. But, you know, I, I still have to figure out like how to make money and stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see. Early, early part of your life, you're making all these plans, trying to do all these things, thinking about the future. And uh, contemporarily, you're trying to live more in the present. I'm trying to do that too. I'm always trying to see if I can do both. It's really hard to do both, but I, 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 I like to fucking believe that you can both live in the present yeah. and plan for the future. Um, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is kind of weird. It's a really tough balance. Um, so you're trying to live more in the present. What's what's what? What about the future? Or are we think? Do we? You know, I know you say you're trying to live in the in the present, which is a good thing to do. I feel like it's pretty easy to neglect that, considering it's all we ever really have. But when you're looking toward the future and you're thinking about the next, I I don't even want to say five or ten years. Like just you know, the vague future. What are we What are we looking at here? Um, well, you know, I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing based on, like, what I feel like doing, because, you know, sometimes I've had a job because I've had anxiety because I don't have a job, but now I'm like, I'm just gonna try to utilize my skills and figure out something that doesn't really suck to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to know, like, I mean, my real dream would be to have, like, a homestead sort of thing, like a uh, small farm. Not mm-hmm. Maybe not completely off-grid, but, you know, off-grid enough. I'm very good at building things since I've built houses, uh, and um, I'm not, I've never farmed, but I could probably farm. And I like animals, and I, you know, I, I think I could do that but I don't have, like, money to do it. So that's just, you know, how do I make money, I guess? Mm-hmm. That's what I have mm-hmm. to figure out. All right, well, I like I like that you've got this, like, focus on... You're, you're, kind, you're kind of doing what, what, what we're talking about with uh, trying to pair a desire to live in the present with uh, at least a vague desire for something in the future so that you can vaguely walk sure. toward that direction. I like that. Yeah, everything's vague. How, how do you feel about everything being vague? Um, I feel vague. What does vague feel like? Vaguely, uh, I feel like uh, it's just strange watching, like ever, like just existing is so strange. I feel so mm-hmm. vague. Like I don't feel good or bad about it, and dying is weird. I don't really care what happens after you die. Um, I'm pretty spiritual, but just the idea that you're going to have to experience infinity, that's pretty strange. Hmm. You're going to have to experience infinity. Do you believe... Well, why would we have to... No, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I'm not... Uh, but, like, why, why would we have to experience infinity if we'll be dead? We wouldn't even... We wouldn't experience anything. Well, I guess... You know, if you just, if there's no experience after you die, I believe that there is some experience after physical life, you know, whether that's not really dying and go to heaven, but, you know, there's some sort of, uh, you return to some sort of source of something, maybe, or maybe you just don't. So, the final thing I'll ask you. Yeah. Despite what you believe, 
because you're bringing up all these options. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, maybe this, maybe that. You're kind of accepting that you don't really know. If you could choose, if it were up to you, if you could play God for a moment, what uh, what, of, what of these different sort of maybes would you choose to be the the correct one? Oh, man, I don't know. Not really, like, have consciousness like you do now, but almost just, like, um, I don't know, because that's sort of weird, because sort of asking, like, what what do you want to happen when you die? And I'm just like, I don't that's really... Exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't really, uh, I think I'd rather just... Ex- if if it had if I had to actually experience something, I just hope it wouldn't be too um, unlike unpleasant. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Good night, Rick. Good night, Lyle. Rick had a Rick had a good point about living in infinity. That always used to scare me when I was a kid. The idea of living forever. Living forever scares me way more than dying if we just are constantly reincarnated into something although I don't know maybe that's beautiful maybe it's cool you get to be a butterfly you get to be an ant you get to be a plant just forever your stuff at least you're not alone right like if I'm here forever and my spirit is here forever then everyone else is here forever and you know my mom's spirit when she dies becomes something else or she's still there you know my dad's spirit when he dies is still there my um the guy who works at the 7-eleven where i buy gummy worms from he's he's still there somewhere you know so we're all kind of chilling forever sit tight it's a long road ahead hello yeah how's uh how's everything going in uh various various uh sections of your life uh, so far it's uh it's looking up um yeah uh, today's actually my birthday so I managed really? to call in. I, yeah, I just started watching. Right, is the is uh, is your birthday important to you? Is it like, is it yeah. a big event or is it like, eh? Not really. I it, over the years, uh, I had a kind of a big event uh, around my birthday uh, a few years ago. I, I live in a town where drugs are kind of uh, pretty bad, but it uh, got my mom and her uh, ex husband, but. I was able to pull my mom out, um, but I don't really care for birthdays too much or, like, I don't know. No cake? But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to call in, say hi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, started smoking a little bit ago before I started watching the stream, so... Probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> I was about to say. I was about to say. Are you are you bringing that up as a form of like justification of your current behavior on this call? Oh yeah, I'm a little bit spacey. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, why do you why do you feel like your behavior needs some form of justification? Oh, it's I don't know. It's uh, something that I've done. I I constantly say sorry all the time, and yeah. What, uh, no, why, do you, why do you think you do that? I'm not for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I probably developed around some time after high school where I graduated. Ugh. Oh, so this is a uh, thing that went on sort of, sort of late in your life. How old are you now? I am 22. 22. You're 22. Okay, and uh, so, okay, so for the last four years, you've been apologizing a lot. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, after I kind of like uh, moved out of my my parents' house, 
right before I graduated. Uh, yeah, I, I never really felt like uh, really had like a place. I don't to. I don't know. I always felt like a in a way or like a burden. But I'm why I'm, I'm uh, trying to feel are you are you trying to work better. on that? Are you trying to apologize less? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those force of habit things now for four years, like you said. Hmm. But it wasn't for sure if there was any sort of like uh, topic of. Oh, so you're, are you still? Are you still? Are you still? You all right? What's happening right now? You're you're. I I can tell you feel like you're doing this wrong somehow. Is that? Am I projecting that on you, or is that? That's what it sounds like. Um. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm not really sure. I was just watching the stream uh, just recently, and I wasn't for sure if there's any topic of choice. Uh, what do you? What if you were doing? What do you? This is like how? What would you doing this? Uh, correctly look even look like I don't know uh, to be honest I kind of wanted to come on to get some sort of like uh, I, I, I guess false guidance if you will because it's it's really comes in myself but uh, any sort of like weigh in on the situation I'm dealing with uh, oh it's uh what's yeah what's uh what's what's the situation what's going on yeah um, so I I'm decently skilled with computers in like a networking or uh, like a cybersecurity kind of way, but the area where I live, it's Midwest and it's farming and random. I live in a city where there's nothing here, but I need to move. But everyone in my family that I like talk to, which I stopped talking to all my family, uh, except for the few people, they all want me to stay. So I'm in an impasse, Gek, and... I don't really know what to do. I want to move and start college, but you know, it's a, it's a cliche, like a small town kind of thing. All right, so you want to move and start? Why? Why? Why can't you move and start college? Um. Well, uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's a, well, I guess it's gonna be at least. Okay, enough to say fear. Yeah, the fear of it. Fear. I was going to say you seem, and again, I'm I'm just a guy on the phone. I'm just a gecko guy. I'm not a psycho. I'm not anything. I'm just a guy. But, but listen, you seem scared, and I don't know. I don't know how to take this fear out of you. But it, but we we both know it's there, like a general fear, or anxiety, or whatever. And I I don't I don't know. I don't have the skills to take this fear out of you. I cannot. I, I cannot do that for you. Um, but we know yeah, it's no. there. We know it's there. Yeah. We know there's a fear. And, I, and I'm thinking, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you. And I and I know, and my, cause I, I don't feel fearful at all right now. Like, you're afraid of, like, even just how you're being on this phone call. And I know, from my perspective, that you have nothing to be afraid of. But I can't, I can't input that data from my end into your central nervous system and, right. and cause you to not be afraid. So I don't so I don't know, but I do know that your fear is is or maybe I don't know this, but I, I, work, work work with me here as I come up with this gotcha. uh with this with this thing. I I do know that your fear at the very least on this call is 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 unfounded. It's not helpful or backed up by by anything sort of legitimate. So maybe maybe that could mean that your fear about other things is uh is on a a sandy foundation. But I, but again, that's all it's all information. It doesn't it it won't compute with your central right. nervous system. Yeah, I know. You can't yeah. you can't tell your you can't use logic to become unfearful or unnervous. I've tried it myself. A lot, yeah, and, and it never works. It's been my problem because I have a very analytical mind, and I like to I, I break things down a lot uh, and try mm -hmm. to think of them logically. But mm -hmm. yeah, a, okay. So you're a very analytical that. guy. You break things down yeah. logically. How have you attempted to logic yourself out of fear, and has that worked? Uh, like uh, so, I have. 
bipolar. So it it it's I hit swings of like where I feel, you know, good, and I have those positive, uh, you know, like uh, thinking processes. Because the the only way you can change, like the way you can actually, uh, I don't know, necessarily like feel better, and, like succeed, quote unquote, is if you can, you know, uh, put your yourself in the right mindset or set healthy mind habits or like the, the way of thinking that is positive. Uh, I'll get in good swings of that, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Do great, and then just kind of like a, a cycle, sell and repeat. I've been trying to find the 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 point, you know. What's your name? Uh, Michael. Michael, have you or have Mike. you spoken to a real have you spoken to a real therapist about your issues? Oh yeah, yeah. And For what do they, what do they tell years. you to do? Um, I've underwent EMDR, which is like a kind of like a which was psychotherapy and stuff. But, um, yeah, I just have like a lot of past traumas that was, they were, uh, trying to unload and like, uh, put away in the filing cabinet, if you will. So, mm. Mm. yeah. Well, I think you should move. I, 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 that's, that'll, if, if, if you, if you did come here for me to weigh in on anything and I, and I, and I, I, I try to fucking, I guess I try to weigh in as little as I can, but I think you should move. Right. Um, because... I shouldn't ask that. Of course. What? Uh, no, no. I don't think you should or shouldn't. I, 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 but I hope I'm not being a dick to you. I, th I, 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 I. It sounds like I'm being a dick. I'm not trying to be a dick. No. Um. I'm saying all these things. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just saying all these things. I'm like thinking. I, I feel like the majority of my talking has uh, been me just sort of thinking aloud. Uh, to myself. Yeah. Which, no, which maybe is, which maybe is being a dick. No, I understand. The point is, I'm a big fat green dick. But I think. What'd you say your name was again? Uh, Michael. Michael, I think. Look, at the end of the day, you're 22. Um, where where are we moving to? Where where are we moving out of? Uh, I what, what I really want is like a, a bigger city. Just big you know, city. Uh, big city. Where 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 are we right now? Where are we right now? Right now, we're in fucking central Indiana. We're in Central Indiana. We want to move to a big city. Uh, what, 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 what big city? Give me some big cities. Where are we, where are we think? Are we, are we going to New York? Are we going to Philly? Are we going to L.A.? Where are we going? To be honest, I was, I was thinking probably Seattle, and like it, it kind of sounds Seattle? ridiculous. Like, it was like whole, why does it sound ridiculous? Like, why is that your gut? Uh, that's that's what I want to know. And I'm not a real therapist, so I, I'm trying to be careful here. But why, why does yeah, that? Why is it? Why is it ridiculous? Why is it off the bat ridiculous? Uh, well, here at least, you know, uh, a lot of people, um, from where I live at least, they, it's always a safety net kind of thing. They always want to, you know, um, I don't, they don't want to go very far and do big things. Mike, fuck those people, okay? I, within you, within you, I know, I know you have, you, you've got your stuff. I know you've got your fear, but within you, deep inside, and I, I, I could sense this from you, from talking to you, within you, th though you may have your obstacles of fear, you have this little burning light that, that desires to uh, uh, do things in spite of those obstacles. I hear that within you, Mike. You want to move, or else you wouldn't, you, or else you wouldn't have called me. You wouldn't have brought it up. You wouldn't. It would. The thought wouldn't have even come to the surface of your mind. You want to live a more rich life. You want new experiences. But all these fucking people in in your Indiana town have this way of thinking that's like rubbing off on you. Don't don't let that happen to you, Mike. Because look, I know that you're afraid. But here's the thing, dude. Is is you're afraid, but you can still do these things in spite of your fear. You know, like yes, these are obstacles that you have to overcome. But I, I, I still think you could do these things in spite of them. So you know, I don't, I, I just, I don't care what, y you know, your dad or your neighbor or your classmate thinks about you going to Seattle. You want to go? I could, I can tell. I know I've barely been letting you speak this entire time, but I, I just, I can tell. You want to go, Mike? Yeah, because now I'm, I'm I'm at the point where I mean, like, I don't 
I don't even see myself having anything to lose, you know? I mean, I might as well try rather than not, and then being regretful and thinking about it for the rest of my small, you know, like, rest of my existence on this rock, <laughs> working a restaurant job or a dead-end factory. Because <laughs> that's all that's here is restaurant factory. <laughs> Mike, you should be Mike. Mike, I, I'm not a real therapist, uh, but uh, you got you should be nicer to yourself, man. You should be nicer to yourself. You should give yourself more credit. Because I, all the people around you, it sounds like, are 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 thinking small, but within you, you want to think big. And I think I think you should listen to listen to that voice that's thinking big for your life. And 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 I guess I fuck. I can just I can tell. Um. Like you just you have a thought and then you attack it with like negativity or whatever whatever it is, but 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 I don't know. I'm not a real therapist and I I, I don't I don't want to pretend to be. But um, all all I will tell you, Mike, before we go is um, from talking to you uh, again. I see within uh, I, I, I can I can hear it in your voice. You desire to do things um, in spite of the obstacles to doing them that you've described to me as well. Um, so that, that is within you, and I believe you can overcome those obstacles. Thank you, Gay. That means a lot. It's, it's been a pleasure and a great birthday. Uh, have a good night, chat. Thank you. I'll be lurking for the foreseeable future. (laughs) Hello, Devin? Yeah, I'm here. Is this Gek? This is Gek. This is me. Oh, shit. Hey, man, it's an honor and privilege honestly it's a fucking honor and privilege uh that anyone calls into this thing so thanks for being on the phone with me Devin. what's uh what's going on is there anything you want to talk about i am a real estate photographer okay so anytime a person is getting ready to uh sell um an, an agent reaches out to me to do the marketing and um, I'm a pretty busy boy. I probably average four to five homes a, a day. So you got to think that's five different households, five different lives. I'm just kind of walking into and like kind of getting a uh, behind the scenes look really quickly. I mean, you can you can only dece- decipher so much in an, an hour or two hour appointment. Mm-hmm. But um, people are very. They're a lot more alike than they they want to believe mm. in a lot of okay. ways. Okay. All right. You're a real estate photographer. You're constantly uh, meeting a lot of people doing this gig and, and not only meeting them, but meeting where they live. Meeting. Um, yeah. I get to go into their dwelling. Their I mean, how crazy is that? It's like, hey, yeah. here's my master bedroom. This is where I, all my possessions are. Yeah, and not only yeah, that, all of so like layer. A, a big a big part of my job is to kind of coach them to get their home looking the best it can. And, you know, we all live in our homes, so it is kind of impossible to like make it photo ready at all times. So like, not only do I have to go into their home, I have to like touch all of their things, Mm. which is, you know, and especially COVID times, that's a little, it's a little sensitive now. Well, Real quick, I don't want to lose okay. this because I want to. I want to hear what you mean by this. You said people are more like than they are. Than, but people are more like than Different. they think. What 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 led you to that conclusion? Just like, man, it's it's hard to put it into a word. But when people like present themselves, they they all do it in a very similar manner. Basically, there's personality type A's, type B's, type C's, etc. And um. The, the people who have like the picture perfect home and everything's immaculate, they all kind of like carry each other, carry themselves the same exact way. They use like very similar verbiage. They have very similar decor sometimes and items. And um, it's just, you know, like I said, when you're like going into these communities and you're like going into people's homes, you, you get to line up all the similarities very quickly. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just like kind of a mind fuck really. Like we're a lot more similar than different. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're all, I think we're all just trying to do the very, very best we can, you know? And, um, 
a lot of a lot of what I found is these families with um, large families, like you know, I've I've walked into homes with like children of ten. Um, honestly, like the more people there are in a home, the merrier it is, which is biz- not bizarre, but it's like you would think with so many different personalities, there'd be a lot more tensions or dramas. And it's kind of the opposite. It's like the more people involved, the more helping hands there can be to achieve or tackle a problem. Hmm. So it's like, if you have any goals to have big families, I can tell you there's a a very specific energy around that. A family of 10, that sounds uh, sounds exhausting. Brady Bunch, right? They they tell me that it gets a lot easier after a child like six, because they're all kind of starting to help a lot, and they're old. They're older, and um, yeah. it's like it just takes a village, you know. If I were like the, if I were like one of the first three, I'd be pretty offended. Uh, if my parents <laughs> had five more, because because at, at that point it's like. You're not having 10 kids unless if something about the first few, you were just like, eh, we we need a do-over here. Right. Yeah, you're kind of like the beta test. Yeah, you're kind of like a beta test. And then there was something wrong with you where they were like, you know what? All right, we fucked up these kids, but let's try again. Let's have five more. <laughs> God. Do you do you have any kids, Mr. Geck? Are you do a parent? Kids? Oh God, I would be such a terrible parent. I don't think I'll I don't think I'll always be a terrible parent, but I think if uh-huh. I had a kid, if I had a kid right now, like if a kid popped out of my dick hole immediately, <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, would it would he would not be having a good life right now. Yeah, I'm a parent of two kids. You're a parent of two kids. Do you like them? I just smoked a little, so. <laughs> well. Oh, well, you can't call a gecko yeah, without, I love my kids. you know, getting, I love, getting I love. blasted yeah. first. But you you, exactly. you, you like them both. Do they like each other? You know, they're six and three. They're so different. I mean, I love them both the same. Um, there is a big difference between boys and girls, in my opinion. Boys are a lot more... Um, they're a lot more physical learners, so they need to touch everything, pull everything apart, jump off the couch to learn about gravity, mm. you know, get the bunk on the head, that mm. kind of stuff. When uh, Girls are a little more in tune with, like, uh, like they're smarter in a sense. Like, they actually get, get reality as it comes in and, and can decipher it just through observation, I would say. Mm. Um and, they don't um, have to touch so the in, paint in on some, the wall to know if it's dry. Yeah, no, they like, oh, obviously, paint is wet. You just put it up, it's still wet. Let's not touch that. You know, so, um, but there's, with boys, it's a little harder in the beginning just because, you know, they break everything. And um, that's just part of it. And people don't really tell you this as uh, someone who doesn't have kids. They just say, oh, have kids, it's great. They don't let you know, like, hey, you're going to, like, literally question everything in life by by having kids and watch them just destroy everything around you that you built and that you loved. Um, and it's just part of the the process of being a good parent. It's like having the biggest thing I've probably gained through being a parent is patience. Like, I'm kind of like the Zen master at this moment. Really? Just because you have to be. You have to be. They test you, man. They're It's hard. Being a parent is not easy, and especially if you're trying to set them up to be a better version of you. Because so I think that's all we kind of really want is to do a little bit better than our parents did. Not mm. a ton, just a little bit. Mm. You know, it's like, hey, I, if I I never got a car growing up as a, a teenager, so I want to be able to leave them a car. Just because mm. I know, like, it, it can be an enabling force to make him more successful, like, speed up the timeline for them. That's the, like it, when I can't step in and spoil them with like finances, it's only to like speed up the timeline. It's not to actually spoil them. It's to be like, Hey, you don't need to have this much of a struggle. So here you go. 
you know? Yeah, that's so that's like nice of you to try to provide them with the things that you didn't have when you were growing up. Yeah. It does feel good. It really does. Hmm. So you say and that I, you've I, gained I, a lot of patience. I feel like this patience, it comes from like a, a patience by fire sort of <laughs> sort of way. Like it's like you got to develop patience or else you will uh, you will lose. No, you're, that's absolutely it. Yeah, you have to. Um. What about what about your uh, do you have a, a partner of some kind? Are they involved in this or are you raising the kids yourself? I, do you have a lovely wife? No, I feel like, you know, and it's so weird. I'm 35 years old. And I'm looking at these younger kids who, you know, and I get the whole like Tinder apps and the internet of things and having that immediacy. Yeah. But they're not learning. They're not learning how to like build anything long term or like actually deal with shit because when you can just say peace out and go to the next person until you need to say, say peace out again, you're not really facing that challenge and like overcoming it and growing you're mm. just you're I, to me you're just damaging yourself or you're just you know hindering your own growth as a person really no, do you, I, do you I'm, think I'm that married. do you think that having multiple partners instead of just sticking to one person is actively damaging <clears throat> it really depends i mean i was raised in a fairly conservative household i've never really been a fan of authority my father was uh, law enforcement so that i did not like that <laughs> growing up very fucking strict insanely strict and uh, um, are you are you significantly less strict you know i don't know yet because mm. the kind of strictness i'm talking about you don't really have to deal with those things until like later in life um you know, they're six and three. There's not much they can do other than destroy my stuff just by not understanding. Have they been um, destroying your stuff just it, by not understanding? Oh, dude, thousands. My son's destroyed thousands of. I, my gear is not cheap. Oh you know, god, to, what's um, he doing? What's he? Is he fucking with the cameras and all that? <sighs> cameras, monitors, uh, oh, like external him hard drives, his butt and mouth and stuff. No, no. Okay, so he like literally shoved my iMac and my like three thousand dollar twenty terabyte hard drive just off the desk. Just wanted it off, so it's off. Thank God for insurance. So this is why I'm not. This but, is why um, I can't have a kid. You just have to like baby proof, baby proof more than you. Because I thought it was baby proofed. No, he showed me he he got into the office. And that's the thing. It really depends on your kid if they're really like, if they're really, not to say he's like really intelligent, but he just figures shit out that I would never think he could figure out. Hmm. You know, this, I, was, I think this he, was an I think interesting, this was an interesting sort of look into, you know, it's, you know what I like about doing this is that we have all kinds of people call in. Like, you know, I talked to a guy uh, yesterday, no, not yesterday, on Monday, who is your age, and he was like, you know, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't have a, a, a wife or kids or a job or anything like that. I'm just gonna peace out and become a nomad. You know, I have, I have people who are, you know, trying to live that sort of traditional life. Right. Uh, you know, there's people who are living yeah. all sorts of lives and have all sorts of desires uh, of, of all sorts of ages. And it's very cool yeah. to hear. It's it, it just always instills into me that there is no one correct way to do it. You know, everyone's wired differently. Everyone has Absolutely. different paths to their own happiness. And right. it's very cool to see, like... Like, I think, you know, would, would you say that if, if you didn't have your wife and your children and your job and you were just sort of wandering around uh, visiting new places all by yourself, you know, maybe you would be Dude, unhappy if doing I was, that. okay, if I was, no, because I could totally see, you know, like, I've always gravitated towards the arts. So 
I could pick up a guitar and draw a crowd or a piano or whatever I need to do. Um, and this whole experience with like generating revenue from my creativity with the photography, I could see like, man, if I was single, I could just like live out of a van. Yeah. Cause all I, my, I mean, my gear is, it is expensive, but it's like the, the, the footprint of it's very small. So I only need like a Pelican case for, worth of gear and a laptop and I'm able to generate six figures wherever I want. So, uh, you know, dope. having that kind of freedom. Yeah. It's, dude, I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly but fortunate kids, to be in the position. But, I'm in. but the, but the con is that your, your son won't be there to take your guitar and, and throw it off a cliff. <laughs> Mash it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's, you know, that's, and that's the whole thing. It's like, if that were to happen, sure, it mm -hmm. sucks, but dude, it makes a good story. So you have to think on the flip side, you know, like, think like about that. the badass story. Or, yeah, you got to be like, hey, we're at the Grand Canyon, and, you know, I just got done with the job and took the kids out and took the guitar, and Liam grabbed it and started playing it and then immediately threw it off the freaking down the cliff. It makes a badass story, kind of. Well, Devin, also, uh, I appreciate you uh, sharing your perspective with us. It's definitely, as I said, it's very interesting to get all these different callers, different uh, perspectives on things and hear from everyone at different states in their journey to whatever it is that they're looking for. If it's, you know, uh, uh, just general calmness or stability or adventure or or whatever it is, it's... Uh, it's very interesting to hear your take on all this, man. Is um, is there anything else you want to say to the, to the people before we go? Yeah, just do you like a hundred percent. If you want to be a doctor, do that grind at the college and get that awesome piece of paper and um, grind. Also, medical industry is gay, but um, if you want to do that, do that. Um, but do you, you just say creative, the medical industry is gay? Dude, we need you know med we need medical reform in this country. Crazy. That's another thing. Going to all these people's homes, I can't tell you how many people have fucking pills and pawn pills upon pills upon. It breaks my freaking heart. Wait, did to you, see did, you did you say did any... you say the medical industry was gay or what did you say it was? Not not. Yeah, I mean that's probably the wrong word. It's it's medical industry is um a scam. Oh, oh, for lack of okay. a better I, I didn't understand what you were saying. It's not literally homosexual. No. I mean, oh, okay. That's just, what I um, thought. That's what I thought. You know, I was confused. Yeah, I was. I, but um, no. Just you know, go for go for the, shoot for the stars. Like if you if you want to be a creative mind, go to college, find people equally as passionate about you or as you, and actually just create with them. Someone will notice. Beautiful. That's all it takes. That's all this is about is like enriching each other's lives. And if you can tap into any facet of that, you're going to be lucrative. And you're going to be successful. Well, Devin. No matter what. Gek bless you. Hope you uh, continue your climb into the Republican tax bracket. And uh, it's a pleasure talking to <laughs> you. Hey, Gek. Keep on keeping on, man. Thank you, man. Talk to you soon. You know what? I, I appreciate that. I... um. You know what? The medical industry. Uh, yeah, he's right. It's it's a little gay. At the end, he's he's he had a point. He had a point. 